<laughs> I, I love that question, so I'm going to start out um, because this yeah. comes up in my cognitive psychology class all the time. Um, Will you repeat the question? Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to paraphrase. What, what's the issue with photographic memory? Does photographic memory exist? Uh, do people have photographic memory? Um, the answer I want to give, and then I'll let my two colleagues uh, respond to it, is everybody has a certain type of photographic memory. It's called iconic memory, and it lasts about a quarter of a second, and it's a little flash of information in the early visual system. Um, but that's the kind of answer that a psychology professor would give. There's also been a lot of research on the kind of photographic memory you're talking about, where there's a very small percentage of people, very often children, that actually can look at something like a matrix of numbers, or they can look at a complex scene, and they can remember it. Like if it's a complex uh, matrix of numbers, they can look at it for a couple seconds and read it back without seeing it. And that's always been a phenomena that's really intrigued cognitive psychologists. It's a very rare um, uh, uh, a, a kind of condition, and very often children outgrow it. As we grow and we become um, adults, into teen years and adults, there's really no purpose, well, okay, kind of my opinion, but there's really no purpose for an adult human being to have photographic memory. It sounds great, but it plays very little role in our society. People like you and I in the classroom, we have to be able to comprehend, understand, and for that we're using a lot more complex types of cognitions than just memorizing a picture or memorizing words on a page or memorizing a matrix of letters. So in that sense, photographic memory has it's been documented in people. It's very rare, usually in children. And as exciting as it sounds, probably a very little practical benef uh, benefit. Maybe you could win some bar bets with your memory, you know, betting people about it. But other than that, I don't think it would get you a very good job at Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> I could add to that about the uh, brain origin for photographic memory. Um, and I get this not from the scientific journals, from, but from 60 Minutes. Um, they had a great report, and you can find it on YouTube um, or probably their website, in which they interviewed people with this very, I guess, in-depth memory of events. And Mary Lou Henner from Taxi, do you remember her? She was one of them. And so they had a panel of eight or so people, and they called a date, like uh, April 3rd, 1920. And they'd all just rattle off about what happened that day. There's some, you know, bus crash or something. But then they followed up by giving them brain scans, and they found that the hippocampus, which is a brain region involved in memory, was significantly larger in these individuals. So it was, so there is some biological basis for, for photographic memory, although I don't know if that was necessarily photographic memory, but for enhanced memory function. And I think just really, I think two things that one is it's so tied to language. So going back to our first question, we start out with that if you look at a lot of the memory training things you can buy and techniques, they're really language tricks that you can learn how to associate things with different words and create narratives and create stories. So you can create that kind of photograph that you recall. But the other part I wanted to mention on that is getting back to that economy of thinking. That, you know, if we remembered everything, there was a show on TV for a while about a detective who anything she saw, she could go back and remember it, had this like perfect memory. Well, the fact is, we'd become almost non functional. So if we could remember every little detail, one, you'd remember everything people said negative about you. So you'd remember everything somebody might have had connotations. One of the ways we work and interact in the world is we forget all that stuff that didn't seem to be of critical importance. And that's how we keep that cortex, how we keep those resources free and available to use. So, and there's many studies that show that lower kind of animals in terms of their brain development are better decision makers than we are because they have shorter memories. That is, they don't remember everything that happened, so they don't bring that baggage into the situation. They look at each new situation like, wow, this is new, I haven't been here before. We walk in and we say, this looks just like the cafe I was in, blah, 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 and we bring all that baggage into our decision. And it tends to, at times, kind of confuse what it is we need to do in the moment. 